Hi, I'm Shilpa, and today I'm in the BA Test Kitchen to have a super secret conversation about Chris Morocco. Once again, we're putting Chris's super taster abilities to the test. This is Giada De Laurentiis' chicken parmesan sandwich. I'm challenging Chris to recreate this dish with all the ingredients in just one day. He'll be able to taste it, touch it, and smell it, but at no point will he be able to see this dish. At the end of the day, we'll come back to see his final creation, and, and I'll, I'll be the, the judge. judge. Nothing too clear from that. Something kind of like vaguely meaty. Whoa. I have this stack of things here. Found a piece of basil. I got like just a tiny kind of nubbin of sort of crunchy, sort of rippling coating. There's just this wild adhesion between this kind of um, very crunchy exterior. There's something about it, it's almost like tempura-like. So I'm gonna remove one of the spiked items. What kind of bird are you? Most likely chicken. It feels like that expression of black pepper where it's almost become spicy. Initially, I was thinking this was a batter, but there does seem to be some kind of crumb. This feels like a human ear. It's like a cheese, like very mild, almost like a mozzarella kind of world. This bit of protein feels like it has like quite squared off edges. One thing I'm thinking about is like chicken thigh, which once it's trimmed does have some more rectilinear edges to it. However, maybe it's a piece of breast that's sort of pounded out. I'm like somewhere between like pickled or preserved squash, lotus root, or maybe it's just raw tomato. I think this was like the first taste of sun-dried tomato I've had since 1987. Now I'm thinking that this is some sort of variation on chicken parm. I think, you know, this has probably been deep fried. I might need to retract my earlier statement and sort of go back to the notion that this could be a three-part dredge. Very often you're dunking that protein into different items in succession. So a dry starch, like flour, cornstarch, then something wet, very often egg, and then finally into um, another dry mixture, whether it's like flour, breadcrumb, um, something of that sort. The impression of what this is, is forming. You are have to be in the vicinity of chicken parmesan. But the question is who and why, always. Ah, it feels like a very sort of hyper-modern and yet slightly dated. I do not have a guess as to a chef. All right. I'm gonna be thinking about some ingredients, writing up my shopping list, and then I will have my first shot at the dish. I think we should get boneless, skinless, chicken, breast, and thighs. Let's get some flour, fine breadcrumb, unseasoned, fresh mozzarella, sun-dried tomatoes, fresh plum tomato. So that's my list. Um, somebody's gonna go out and shop. Confidence level's like a little too high maybe. There could be 15 other things just tucked in the dredging elements or in those layers somewhere. Whatever, we gotta, we gotta get a first shot at it, you know? Maybe my opening move will be the thigh. So we'll need a meat mallet for that for sure. It's really just gonna make it one uniform thickness. So you have a more even cooking piece. They do really well in kind of a cutlet application. When put into the heat of sort of a deep frying environment, they're gonna resist losing moisture better than boneless, skinless chicken breasts. One thigh could become two pieces of fried chicken here. So I'm just gonna cut this in half. I'm just gonna put that aside until we're ready to use it. All right, so I'm doing fine breadcrumbs. So we're gonna start by trying a three-part dredge. Got a cup of flour. So I'm gonna season all of these elements, salt and pepper, also egg in the middle here. I'm just gonna do like a little pinch of salt in the egg. Salt, salt, pepper, pepper, salt. So I'm thinking this 
needs to be a step beyond cast iron skillet with like an inch of oil. I'm thinking this is more like two to three inches of oil. Just getting that going, it's gonna take probably 10 minutes to preheat. It did seem like there was some kind of herby quality to the cutlet. An impression is sort of forming of like what the spice cabinet might look like, you know, to create this dish. Dried oregano, you know, it kind of gives you pungent herb. Now, I think we need to get into some sun-dried tomato here. So I'm just giving these a rough chop. Do we need to do anything to them? Sun-dried tomatoes, they just, they suddenly became a big deal like in the 80s and 90s because they probably just like weren't in wide circulation at that point. There's weirdly like not much salt on them. They just don't really taste like much other than like incredibly sour shoe leather. I just threw a little bit of olive oil on them, give them a little more flavor, plus a little salt. It's already a little better. Could there be something else that needs to go in there? Sure. Okay, so this is fresh mozzarella. I said it felt like a human ear. This feels like a human ear. It has that like, you know what I mean? So we're just gonna do some slices of tomato. So I'd say we're ready to dredge here. All right, so first up, so that is our seasoned flour mixture. So I just wanna let all the excess egg drip off. I don't want there to be so much moisture on there that the coating bubbles away from the meat. Okay, there it is. Definitely having some doubts here. Those cut faces, like what's that about? But I don't hate it. And then going into the fine breadcrumb mixture that has salt, pepper, and dried oregano. Chicken is fully dredged, ready to go into the hot oil. I'm just gonna start out at 350. In the original dish, I kept remarking upon how tightly fused that breading was to the meat. There's just this wild adhesion. That is what I'm trying to capture here, and I think deep frying is gonna allow me to do it. All right, let's put the ugly one underneath, cheese. I don't know where the basil should go. Then tomato, cheese again, and one basil leaf. Just felt right, Parmesan, red, you know? For ingredients, uh, I would put myself at a 70. I may be wrong about this sun-dried tomato sauce component, and there could be some other spices and flavorings in the breadcrumb or in the dredging. You know, the frying could be right, the assembly could be right, but if it needs to be baked, if, I, I don't know. Let's, let's maybe put 70 for that as well, for technique. Parents, uh, maybe an 80. Taste, maybe I'd go with like 70 again. I feel like there's something about the tomato that's bugging me. So these are my actual scores. I have not seen them yet. This will tell me exactly where I am right now in the process and where I hopefully need to go from here. Hmm. So ingredient wise, I gave myself 70, I'm at a 78. Technique, I gave myself a 70. I'm at a 70. Appearance, 80. Um, but I'm actually at 91. We're actually in Brown Town over here. Taste, 70. They gave me an 85. Wow. So actual score right now is 81. Going into the second tasting, I'm gonna be thinking really hard about the sun-dried tomato preparation and then also, you know, possible baking of this entire package. Um, so I'm gonna be paying pretty close attention to that. Okay, so I do feel like there is a leaf of basil on top. I'm gonna lift the top piece off. So the way that the cheese is kind of adhered, I think what we've gotta do, fry the chicken, lay the cheese on top, stick it in the oven, you know, which will further kind of crisp up this exterior. This feels like it was more deliberately melted. I'm still feeling good about chicken thigh. I'm trying to see like if I can get a little bit more of like that heat that I felt I was getting on the first pass. I'm not really getting it. In fact, I don't even know that I'm getting oregano. So this is our sun-dried tomato. That element is really sort of tripping me up. I would say like, you know, you could puree them. I'm at a loss for like what other ingredients could be in here. 
It's interesting. I really perceive the breading differently this time. I'm wondering if there's like some grated parm. Maybe that's worth exploring. Let's try a different technique for you know, sort of pureeing sun-dried tomato. And we gotta melt that mozzarella onto the crispy chicken. Let's do the parm. So we're just gonna blend it, just a fast way to grate it. So parm is now gonna go in with breadcrumb. Is it possible there's a little bit of Parmesan in with the sun-dried tomato? Gonna do chicken. Okay, so I'm gonna keep the same flour coating. This is the breadcrumb that's got Parmesan in it, salt and pepper. And then this is the same egg mixture. Go salt and I'm gonna do a little bit of pepper. In the second tasting, I just tasted like way less of that heat. Frankly, it could have been me misperceiving like the parm, the intensity of like that frico flavor, the toasted Parmesan flavor. Not that it would have come through as like chili heat, but it certainly kind of comes through as a certain intensity. Let me show you what frico is. That's frico. Taking cheese, melting it, it turns into almost like a cracker. When you put Parmesan, into a breadcrumb coating. You're creating this in that matrix of crispy fried breadcrumb. I'm gonna slice up some more Mott's, our friend, Mr. Out of Season Tomato. Just doing a super rough chop on the sun-dried tomato. Now in terms of pureeing this, I'm thinking olive oil and water. I wanna get the consistency a little bit closer to where it should be, taste it, and think about whether Parmesan actually makes sense in there. I don't hate the idea of putting some Parmesan in there, frankly, as partly in the spirit of just like seasoning it. Sun-dried tomato pesto is a thing. More salt. Might throw a pinch of pepper in there too. It's better. I'm not really tempted to add basil to that. I think I'm holding there. I don't know, I hate guessing the chef, you know, after like slandering sun-dried tomatoes. The frying process is gonna be much the same, so it should be just fine. I'd say this is looking good. I'm gonna bring in the cheese. This time I'm going to actually be baking the mozzarella onto the cutlets to get that kind of meltiness and that adhesion we're looking for. All right, so we've got our sun-dried tomato pesto, got our tomato. I'm gonna invert the second cutlet. This feels wrong. Yeah? What do we think? I took out oregano and is that gonna result in a 30 point difference? Maybe not, but I don't know. Maybe I would like say like 80 on ingredients. Maybe let's say technique wise, I'm at an 85 now. Appearance, maybe because I have two pieces of basil on there now instead of the one, maybe I'm at 92. Um, taste, I, I'm, I think I'm, I'm good at an 85. I don't wanna be too bullish on that score. It is time for the judge to come in and for them to decide how I actually did. And I'm gonna find out what this dish is and who it came from. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Okay, so are you ready to see what dish you've been working on all day? I certainly am. <laughs> Let me present Giada De Laurentiis's chicken parmesan sandwiches. <laughs> this is a sandwich? <laughs> This is not a sandwich. Well, you oh. did good in terms of figuring out the, what it was. It's panko. I'm surprised that's the one that you didn't get. I, it, it felt so finely textured to me. Was this deep fried? It wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. The it color wasn't. around the edge, like yeah. let's say the color gets a little bit paler. You know, this kind of like band, you know, like that white band. Yeah. From a tactile perspective, it felt like it was like. Okay, so for ingredients, you gave yourself 80, and I'm gonna go with 78. Is that boneless, skinless <laughs> chicken breast? Yeah. That's a big one, why your score is yeah. at 78. There was no basil in your sun-dried tomato. It didn't even cross my mind to think of it as a pesto until very late in the we game. We noticed that. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> you also took the oregano out. And it should have been and in there. And it should have been in there, so oh. you were very close. With that, we move on to technique. You gave yourself an 85. I, I agree. The, um, the, the cutlets were like toasted in an oven with the mozzarella on it. Is that correct? No, they were just the cheese is on Are the skin.
skillet. Me? Yeah, it gets melted in the skillet. Oh, when... it's, it goes on to the yep. thing as it's cooking. Yeah, I guess you got to the same place in the end. So I don't think that was a big deal breaker. Mm. It was perhaps, you didn't get to where it was in terms of being it being a pesto. And I think that was yeah. the major point of conversation here. I um, was just really missing sauciness. I get that. I mean, I guess it's a sandwich. You need it to have some integrity, though. I so. still do not consider this a sandwich. <laughs> so we'll just have to agree to disagree. Uh, appearance, you gave yourself a 92. Again, I have to agree. Yes, there's an obvious difference. Yours is much bigger, but I think in a good way. It's golden. It has all these ridges that you might not have got if you used like a chicken breast, for instance. So yeah. though that was a wrong choice, ingredients wise, it seems to have paid off in the way it looks. I love your uh, second basil leaf. It really added. Oh. oh, we cracked the code on that one. <laughs> okay, that leaves us with taste. Okay, are you telling me you can taste basil in that sun-dried tomato pesto? I don't know. I mean, I can definitely see it, which I guess you didn't have that advantage. And clearly you've not seen this show before. <laughs> now you're going with mine? Mm-hmm. I have to say, now I can answer your question. Yes, you can tell the difference between there being basil and not. Really? <laughs> yes. You think? I think so. Oh my you gosh. You don't? It's interesting because when I taste hers, all I get is these like massive lumps of sun-dried tomato. So for taste, you gave yourself an 85. I think I would give you an 82. I think in an ideal world, I would have the way you did your chicken. Uh, but I think with this pesto, ideal chicken parmesan sandwich. Yeah. Okay, so for your final score, okay. you gave yourself 86 and I give you 85. <laughs> so you, you came pretty close. All right. <laughs> We're on the same page here. Okay. <laughs> it seems like a fairly easy dish to figure out, but it's challenging to get all the details right. You hope just not to miss like anything like crazy major. Yeah. Thank you. Of Welcome course. to the show. <laughs> yes, I'm happy to be it here. It is like awesome to have you here. Thanks, Chris. All right. Panko. You know, it's like you make these decisions and you move on. Just like looking at it, you could tell how it was cooked. You could tell what the breadcrumb is, you know. Jada, sometimes, you know, simplicity is best. I feel like I overthought this one a little bit and um, you actually managed to make boneless, skinless chicken taste pretty friggin' awesome. So um, I apologize for what I said about sun-dried tomatoes. I take it all back um, <laughs> and I'll do better next time. I don't think it's a sandwich, sorry.